Welcome. I've been trying to add more life to the voxeling world. And at my daughter's request, I've started with snow. Here we're drawing 300 snowflakes, and each one is an individual mesh consisting of nine squares, thus eight, uh, 18 triangles. They're billboarded. I finally figured out how to do that in a shader. It's quite nice. Billboarding means they always face me, face the player, no matter what direction I turn. That way it can be a 2D snowflake, uh, save some GPU memory, some GPU processing, and still be reasonably convincing. But of course, there's definitely room for improvement, room for optimization, which I love. And once we optimize, well, we can draw more snowflakes. So that's going to be cool. All right. As you can see, they fall and they float and then leave a bit of a snowpack on the ground. I'm not going to talk about the snowpack in this video, but um, the motion is what I wanted to talk about today. So while thinking about how snowflakes move, I realized I didn't want each one to be moving in a random direction. Um, I wanted some order to the chaos, something that made sense and somewhat mimicked reality, even though this is a game made up of huge cubes. Uh, in, real, in the real world, wind is what causes the flakes to move in a semi-coordinated way. So I wanted something like that. So here's what I did. <clears throat> Here's the snow class, and let's see, in the tick uh, callback, which is called on every frame, you know, when the browser's about to draw a frame. Let me find my notes again, I'm sorry. Let's see. All right, there's a vector made up of three, three values. This represents the general direction that the wind is blowing, and each snowflake will be guided by this vector. So we calculate a new value for, for this vector, new values for each of the, the directions, you know, 0, 1, and 2, representing x, y, and z um, directions. So we calculate a new value for this every 5 to 15 seconds, as you can see down here. And I'm not using truly random value for the y coordinate or the y direction because I don't want the snowflakes to fall up. So I have some predefined fall speeds that I just draw from. But the, this is poorly named, but basically the other x and z values that we calculate is just a random um, float, which is going to be between 0 and 1.0. And then we subtract half. That way we shift it into the negative. So it'll end up being between negative five and or negative point five and positive point five, and then I divide by ten just to to adjust the speed. And this is pretty crude. Like if the frame rate is higher or lower, that means they'll move slower or faster. And it's not really what I want, but it's good enough for now. To do very um, Okay, that's not a good comment either, but either way. All right, so so we pass this top-level vector into each snowflake, asking it to update its velocity. And that happens over here. So as you can see, each snowflake has a speed. It's calculated up here when it spawns. It gets a random speed from an array up here. Um, so I guess I probably could have taken this one out, but so that way it more tracks closely with the Y that I set in the top level. But either way, the, the, the idea behind this is the top level vector tells us to move, you know, so many, um, floating point values, so many, it's a certain number in the X direction, but each snowflake may say, no, I'm only going to move a third of that, or I'm only going to move two thirds of that speed. That way each snowflake can vary a little bit. Oh, where is the... Okay. So basically the velocity that's passed in, we multiply our speed by it. 
to get our desired velocity for ourselves. We have some autonomy here. Or the, each flake has some autonomy. So we do that. And then in the tick, call back down here, we do some linear interpolation between this new desired velocity that we, you know, may adhere to fully or may adhere to to a third. We interpolate between that and our current velocity. That way each flake doesn't abruptly change direction and then fully ruin the illusion, you know. So we kind of kind of smooth it into that general direction that that we are asked to go. Once we've calculated that new velocity adjustment, we'll adjust our position towards that direction. That's pretty much it. And ended up being a little simpler than I thought it would be, and still ends up being quite magical. Got some uh, some random number generation, some snowflake autonomy, and smoothing. And uh, yeah, I quite like it. Eventually I will probably move away from nine individual squares, get some different snowflake textures, maybe end up doing just one square per snowflake and change the track texture that's applied as a way to vary them. That'll be a lot fewer points to draw. And uh, should look pretty nice. Okay. Thanks for watching.